All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by John Molyneux, who is in Cornwall in the UK. How are you doing, John? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me on the Sales Pop show. I always love to come on guest, guest on shows, especially if they're sales related. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're going to talk about today is sales samurai, uh, cold calling and closing mastery. And you recently you know, published a book, sales, The Sales Samurai Master, Get Your Black Belt in Sales, um, which I encourage people to check out on, on Amazon. It'll also be in the link below this video. So um, why, why sales samurai? Let's just start that piece. Uh, why why the, the martial arts kind of connotation here? Yeah, that's a great question. And it, well, it stemmed to when I was a karate instructor, I was a sensei many years ago. And part of uh, becoming that instructor was I was expected to, I got all my gradings for free. I got all the karate tuition for free from the, I was taught by two sort of fifth dance. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, but I, so I got all that. I didn't have to pay for that. But part of my sort of uh, position was to go out and build up the classes. So I was going door to door and uh, finding new, should we say, students for the, for, the, for the academy, for the club. So that's where my sales journey began. And that's kind of how I blended the two together because there were so many similarities between sales and martial arts. And, and for me, uh, say, for example, the, the, you stood in line in the dojo or the dojang, is it what you call it? Yeah, and dojang, you're, doing, yeah. mm -hmm. you're doing punches, repeated punches, like stomach level punches or head level punches over and over again. That repetition, that discipline, you're going to be repeating yourself in sales. You're going to repeat the scripts over and over again. You're going to repeatedly knock doors over and over again. So there's so many correlations, the discipline, the perseverance, the patience, uh, you have to have patience if you're teaching a child his kata or his form yeah, and he's not sure. getting it and you have to keep showing him and keep correcting him and that kind of thing. You may have a similar situation with a prospect. You have to keep nurturing them and following up with them and they can't make decisions. So there's just so many, so many things that, that kind of cross over, I think. So that's why I, I decided yeah, to come no, to the sales samurai. I couldn't agree more. And one of the things that I, I, I often say to people, it's, it's like when people have been in sales for a long time, sometimes you tend to forget some of the fundamentals and, uh, you know, maybe you're doing not doing all the things you should be doing anymore because you kind of have it and you think you'd. And, and I think that sometimes undoes people. And that's the one thing I think one of the things that you just referenced, I think that's one of the things that martial arts really teaches you. It's like, um, you know, I've been, as I was telling you, I've been doing martial arts with my son since he was three and a half and, I don't know how many times we've done basic foot movements, foot placement, all of that. Um, mm. But sometimes our, our our master will come into class and that's what you end up doing. You end up doing almost the exact same thing you learned like way back at the beginning, because if you don't have the fundamentals and if you don't practice the fundamentals, uh, you can very quickly become unstuck thinking that you can just focus on the cool stuff. Absolutely. Well, if, if you don't get your basics right and your basics don't look good and your basics aren't sharp, then you're not going to do the high-end catches or the high-end one isn't, isn't going to look right, is it? Because you haven't got your basics down. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, so when you say, uh, when, when you get your, your book and then it talks about things like, um, you know, building rapport like a ninja. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of people uh, avoid co-calling and prospecting like a ninja avoids getting seen by people <laughs> but That's brilliant. So, I like that. Uh, so how do you how do you how do you get over that and actually use your ninja skills to actually get over the fear of cold calling or prospecting and actually build rapport oh wow well as you probably know john people always kind of look for an easy fix with this yeah. but unfortunately there isn't one you just literally have to if there's something you want to achieve or get good at it's like anything in life you just have to feel the pain and do it anyway so that's what i did i wasn't pleased every time i knocked on that door and i got it slammed in my face or told to f off or whatever or mm -hmm. have the phone hung up on me when i'm cold calling on the telephone it's not something that that that, that particularly pleases me or, or enjoy happening to me but it's just something that you build a resistance up to and after after time it you just don't, you're not affected by it anymore. I've got this, I call it my, like my chi bubble, you know, like Tai Chi mm. or your, yeah. Yeah, this, this surrounding, maybe I've got this shield up and I just, the, the negativity just bounces off me. So it doesn't matter whether you're a martial artist or such, you don't have to be 
a, a martial arts background, but you need to have that kind of discipline to say, I'm going to keep doing this regardless of how many people reject me because they're not actually rejecting me. It's not a personal attack on me. They just don't particularly want my products because it's not a one size fits all. That's what one of the things that sales beginners make, the, the mistakes they make is thinking that ev- what they have, everybody wants, but it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> yes, yeah, like that old saying is what if you only have a hammer, then everything is a nail, right? Everything you see is a nail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You end up with a trashed house because you just be yeah. smashing everything up, won't you? <laughs> exactly. But I think that's a good point is that is the fact that, uh, you know, getting used to the rejection piece, because as you said, I mean, it's not personal and it may not even be, your product or maybe timing it could be a, a thousand mm. different variables so if you if you personalize everything uh that happens to you you end up coming up with scenarios that are probably not even correct um so you have to have that kind of ability to be able to just move on undoubtedly and not like, like you just said as well it might it might just be bad timing they may mm-hmm. follow back up with you in a few months i've had that where i've kind of forgot about something and they've actually followed up with me and said oh i'm ready to go now you're like all right boom 4k so you get a nice bit of commission coming through or whatever so you don't always write them off they just may be honestly saying look it's just not the right time for me yeah so if you do get if you do get somebody uh, and uh, and it looks like they actually want to have a conversation with you tell me about how do you build rapport like a ninja well, for me, I, j- I just kind of, uh, after so long, it, it does come naturally, like I'm guessing it probably does with you and anybody that's kind of time served. It's really quite natural for me to build rapport because it, I genuinely just do it. If you try and fake rapport, that's where you're going to start to see the cracks. You have to you genuinely want to sort of get to know them. And what, what I find really works well with rapport is like, like we've done already, we had that common ground with the martial arts. So mm-hmm. what I tend to do is I'll, I'll ask them, oh, so what do you do in your free time or... What, what's your interest or hobbies once you and then if you can find that common ground boom that that's gonna that's gonna really put you in a good place and and that's gonna sort of where, where the trust thing is gonna kick in as well if if you kind of have that common ground and then you've got the banter going backwards and forwards and you can make them laugh even humor is a, a, a very strong tool if you can if you can get a few laughs out of people boom that's when the kind of the uh, the trust factor is going to go through the roof yeah, yeah. And and the problem is then if you are coming into it kind of very reticent or or nerve or, or expecting rejection and stuff, it's very hard to switch mm-hmm. into that to switch mm-hmm. modes like that. So in many ways you have to you have to go in with with a different a different mindset. But the other thing that you you mentioned there, which I think is very key here, is the idea of being genuine and authentic. Uh, and and people are talking a lot about that nowadays, like authenticity and all of that. But you can't fake that. That has to be real because it's so easy to tell when somebody is faking being genuine. Yeah, yeah. I say that all the time. You you kind of uh, like what was it? Peace from the pod. We definitely come across with the same same sort of message. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that especially you guys struggle with is the thinking about the sale and the thinking about their wages or their income or their commissions. So as soon as you go into a conversation, they are going to feel that because sales is all about emotions. So you're connected on an emotional level. So if, if the emotions that you're bringing across is that you want to feed yourself or you want to line your pockets, they're going to see through that. Whereas if you're genuinely getting into the conversation to help them, all I ever say to myself nowadays is before a phone call is I want to help this person today or how can I how can I serve this person today rather than how can I make this sale happen for me? Yeah, it's an, it's it's a great point. And I think that's uh, you know, it that comes across very quickly. Uh, from people and I think then uh, and I think it's a tough thing for some people is to switch into that mindset of like how can I help this other person uh, and and that's where the empathy part comes in because unless you think like that and unless you really start to look, try and put yourself in their shoes you can't you 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 can't display the empathy that I think people are looking for now I think people want to be empathized with yeah I agree especially with the current climate this mm-hmm. we've kind of lost that human contact and a lot of it lot of i mean we're a lot of this virtual stuff and it's kind of nice isn't it but you we have lost a little bit of that kind of human connection haven't we no no absolutely absolutely and that's why i think that uh, it's interesting that some people are still avoiding like switching on cameras for sales calls and stuff like this which doesn't make any sense whatsoever i mean sometimes it's the people who have no problem walking into a room and networking but they freeze when they turn on their zoom camera 
Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, it was something that I had to, again, another another thing that I had to go through the pain and, and come out the other end is I hated the sound of my own voice. I thought I had a horrible accent and that kind of thing. And I hated the, the idea of myself being filmed. But I started to make video content a couple of years ago and just li literally got through it. And then eventually I just got used to it. And you do. It's like anything. Repetition is, is king, isn't it? You just get, get used to things. Yeah, it is. And um, at the end of the day, it's you. So, uh, <laughs> so whether you're recording or whether you're on Zoom or not, that's how you're coming across most of the rest of the time anyway. So you so you might as well get used to it. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then you you mentioned um, you mentioned handling objections like a boss. And, and I guess that's that's one of the things that uh, I love that handling handling objections like a boss. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I, I tried to make the the the, uh, the titles of the chapters a little bit a bit a bit quirky, mm -hmm. so that's why I came up with that one. But yeah, you, you do have to handle objections like a boss because it's like today, for example, I've started doing door to door again. We, we're allowed to do door to door again, and I I like to keep my hand in, especially nitty gritty sales roles like that. Uh, for example, with the coaching side of things, I'm happy to cold mm -hmm. call for people that I'm coaching because I think. Um, as a leader, you should be able to do what if you can't expect somebody to do that's something you're not prepared to do yourself. Is it's a yeah. lead by example kind of thing? And I spoke to this lady, and she was like, "No, no." And and, I, and she, so she came up with an objection. No, it's not really something I'm looking. Oh, and I, so I just said something like, "It's just for windows and doors." And I said, "Oh, have you not even considered uh, going for UPVC? I think it'd look quite nice here, wouldn't it?" And then she just went. Mm. Well, yeah, I suppose that. so. You over, I overcame that objection like a boss because she, mm -hmm. I made her think in a different mind mindset. Yeah, and what often happens is is uh, instead of instead of that, either people get thrown when the objection comes up, or they focus too much on objections and are paralyzed before the the even the interaction because they're waiting for it. They're waiting. Okay, when's the objection going to come? Absolutely. Well, and I thought all it is, it is an objection. It's not a no. This is what beginners mm -hmm. don't differentiate between an objection can be overcome. And that, that's what you need to do. Overcome two, maybe three. And then if you, if you keep having to overcome objections, there's an underlying issue, there, isn't there? But yeah. if you, a lot of the time you can overcome one or two and then you, you're going to proceed further, aren't you? Well, yeah, and 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 the thing is, every ob every objection that is raised is an opportunity for a conversation and an opportunity to dive deeper. Mm, absolutely yeah i couldn't agree yeah. more absolutely and then uh, and then part of all this you say like in, in the importance of having a network right and uh, and i think th that's an interesting subject because i think people just think network nowadays is oh let me go on linkedin and like, connect with as many people as i can oh look at me i've got a i've got a huge network but maybe that network actually doesn't do anything for you. And maybe you're connected with a bunch of people that you don't need to be connected with or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely think networking has been somewhat um, undermined a bit over the last while. Yeah, I think that's what's kind of good about what we do. We've got such a great media for building our networks, just, just from podcast community, because it doesn't mm. necessarily have to be, it's even better with us when it's sales related, but any kind of podcast, I've got a lot of connections in the podcast industry now that are not sales related and they've helped me along the way. I mean, for example, when I was sort of eight months into podcasting myself, I was kind of having some sort of, uh, should we say, uh, learning difficulties with it and not, not really knowing which direction to go in. And just the fact that, that I was speaking to an experienced podcaster, he helped me say, right, you don't, you shouldn't just concentrate on guests only, get some of your own episodes out there. So I started doing solo episodes, boom, and the downloads went straight through the roof. And that's not something I would have thought about if I didn't have a, a, a sort of network of, of other podcasters. Yeah, and I think you just raised a, a, a great point there because, I mean, people often think of network as, okay, if I build up a network, then they can just, ref, you know, I'm looking all the time for, are they somebody I can sell to or are they somebody I can who can refer me to somebody I can sell to, as opposed to what you just said there, which I think is even more important, a, a network of people who can mentor you, give you advice, point you in mm. the right direction. For me, mm. that that's that's the invaluable part of it. It, it, yeah, absolutely. Like you say, you, you, even even as sales individuals, the last thing you should be doing is thinking about your network as purely just to sell people. <laughs> like you say, the, the beauty is when people get to know you and if, if they follow your content and that kind of thing, they're going to refer people to you anyway. You don't have to actively spam or anything like that. That's one of the things I think I cover in the book is spamming. Don't ever do that to anybody, especially if you're new to sales. I was guilty of it a little bit at first when I did it 
on on LinkedIn, and you can get some success out of it. But it's something like, say, for example, you're spent sending out spamming messages to people. I think it's something like one in a hundred or something ridiculous like that. But the rest of them hundred people, you can forget ever having a conversation with them again. <laughs> so the numbers are really not worth it. No, they're not. And actually, the funny thing on on LinkedIn, and I think they did themselves a huge disservice here, is this thing now where you can if you know, when somebody reaches out and to connect with you and they write a nice message and you think oh, oh that sounds like a nice person i'll connect with them and immediately that auto email in linkedin message pops up <laughs> from them and it's a pitch and you're just like i mean it kind of puts me off completely because it's mm -hmm. like okay mm -hmm. um you just as you said you're just fishing and spamming here right now you're not really mm -hmm. that interested and I'd like i don't want to, just because i said yes to your connection doesn't mean i want to the second i click connect <laughs> i don't want to pitch from you thank you very much Oh, I'll tell you what gets me down at the moment is the, the Bitcoin and the, and the Forex. You just get bombarded by it I'm on Facebook every other day. It's like Forex trader, no thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? When, it, when they send you a friend request and it's a Forex trader or Bitcoin or, or Bit mining or something like that, it's like, no thanks, not today. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And and just um, one last one to, to touch on here, and I, I love this, and it, it's one that is um, often very much overlooked, and that's the whole follow-up piece. Uh, as you say, if you don't follow up, the samurai has no sword. And I think this is something that it really catches a lot of people, and not just like rookies too. This is something that a lot of people make a mistake on. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times, sir, people just can't be bothered or, or they follow up once. Uh, you have to kind of get your own feel for this. I, I personally think for me, I'll mm -hmm. do sort of two follow ups. So, so one, I'll kind of, and one of the very important things you probably agree with this as well is it, if it comes to so, so, so have, say, for example, the objection is, um, I just need to move my finances around. I've had that one that yeah. comes up quite a bit. Yeah, I, I do want to move forward, but I have to arrange if, and, and speak to bank or, or whatever. So I have, I have a bit of like sort of work to do on, on my end. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so that's fine. So how long would you need for that? Um, probably about a week. Okay, so should we go for next Thursday, two o'clock in the afternoon? How's that? So you, you don't just say, right, we'll, we'll leave it till next week sometime. Make mm -hmm. sure that you, you get that time and date set in, set in stone and, and, and the Zoom invite, or whatever it is you need to do, get that set in place. Perfect. And then you follow up with them on that day at that specific time. You don't uh, start them the next three days in a row early or anything like that or, or does that make sense so don't don't be yeah. like desperate for that follow-up leave it for the time that you've you've, you've booked it for yeah. and then when you speak to them if they're still unsure and if and they, or, or, or yeah, I've not managed to get everything sorted yet I still still need to blah 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 and then they prime me off again so I'd say okay right that's fair enough well when will be good for you leave it 24 hours 48 hours okay right well and then you arrange another time and then you follow up that second time. Now, this is kind of where if they're going to do that again, that's when I'd put the ball back in there kind of say, okay, mm -hmm. right. So uh, you're not ready yet then. Okay. So why don't we kind of touch base again when you, when you are ready to move forward, why don't you give me a ring or drop me an email at this, 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 and this. So that way it, it may still happen, but it may not, but at least you're not wasting any more, any more of anybody's time. You've kind of left it, got as far as you want to get with it. And then you, then they can contact you if, that, if that's that's the kind of way I like to do it anyway. Yeah, and, and what I like about what you're just saying there is, you I mean you're making everything deliberate, as you said. I mean, it's very easy for you to say to me, uh, "Oh, hey, John, yeah, uh, it's going to take me a week or so. Follow up next week." And I say, "Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a shout next week." Um, mm -hmm. And it's and it's very easy because that gets if I contact you, I might contact you at the wrong time and may get lost in the shuffle. There's so many mm -hmm. things that can go wrong. Um, it's far better if you can actually get something on the calendar and solid. Yeah. And then and then, as you said, and then even if you have to do it again, you now come off as a, you come off as a very consistent person who does what you say you're going to do. Absolutely. Yeah. I, well, I didn't really think about it that way, but yeah, you, you kind of, and the other sort of important thing of that is you still, you're giving them some sort of, um, should we say like 50, 50, but you're not letting them take charge, never let them take full charge of the situation. That's why you say the time of the day and you sort of book them in and for the mm -hmm. follow-up. Don't let them take charge and say, does that make sense? They should yeah. never have full control of the, of the conversation. No, no, absolutely. And in many ways, you're kind of making them commit to something. So you're moving it forward. You're making them commit to the goal and hopefully to do something in the interim. So there's action taking place.
Absolutely. And the thing is, you, you're kind of giving them a, a it's not, it's not, it's not, it should never be pushy. It should just be a mm-hmm. gentle nudge in the right direction because you, you've, you should, by this stage, you should have already come to the, the, the agreement or the negotiator between yourselves that this is going to work for them and it's a good decision mm-hmm. for them to move forward. So by this time, the warm and it should be a natural progression into the clause. It shouldn't be sort of scary for them or there shouldn't be any more complications. This is, this is the kind of stage when it should be quite straightforward. But again, with a follow-up, that I've had it when they've said, I'm going to need a couple of months or something like that. And so you just do that. You just say, right, I'll mm-hmm. follow up in a couple of months. Don't forget about them. Make sure you've got that system in place where you, you book them in and then you follow them up. It's, it's not that hard, <laughs> but it's surprising yeah. how many people don't see that. But you could seriously d- even double your income or your commissions or whatever it is you, you, you're earning by following up correctly. Yeah, so I mean, as I would say, uh, being consistent and being persistent, but in an elegant way, um, you know, then, then that'll actually impress people. Well, listen, John, this has been fantastic. The book is called Sales Samurai Master, uh, written by John Molyneux here, who is the sales samurai. All of John's information is going to be below this video, including links to the book, etc. But before we go, John, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, well, at the moment, um, I'm offering coaching. Uh, I can do one-on-one with people, but I'm also offering coaching for sales teams as well. So whether that's cold, a cold calling team, so you might have like a solar panels team or, or a windows and doors team or whatever. So you might have a cold calling team, but you might just have a sales team that you want to improve their closing rate or, or just their performance or the mindset or, uh, do you know what I mean, the, their attitude and that kind of thing, because this, this is all very important. So I can actually do workshops aimed at, aimed at sales teams, if that's what you're in, if you'd be interested in that, or I can offer the one-on-one coaching. Uh, so those are the main things I'm doing at the moment. But like I've already mentioned, if, if you wanted one-on-one with me and you're struggling with cold calling and you want to get better at cold calling, I will work with you and I will actually cold call with you, not just not just to show you how to do it. The same with closing. If it's the closing side of things that you want to work on, I've been closing high ticket for, for influencers over the years as well. I've got uh, I got up to like a 60% close ratio. So if you want help with the closing mm. side of things as well, I can actually coach you and do some closing calls on your behalf and record them and, and work with you that way as well. So that, that's why I try and, that's what I try and be a bit unique about my, uh, should we say, coaching side of things. I won't just coach you, I'll do the work for you as well or with you until you sort yeah. of get better. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. So uh, you heard that if you're, if you are struggling with cold calling or struggling with closing or whatever, just uh, look up John, as I said, all the information will be here and he can work directly with you. Uh, My name is John Golden, sales pop online sales magazine pipeline is CRM. Thanks, John. And thank you all for watching and listening. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.